Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. I'm going to spend this uh, update on the crypto craziness that's going on because it's just insane what's going on with Bitcoin. Uh, I pointed out the, the pennant, a very, very clear pennant formation, and I pointed out in the past that uh, pennants are one of the most reliable formations you can find, uh, technically, you can find in any market. I personally believe that the cryptocurrency markets are the most honest markets that are out there. And yes, you can short them, but you can only short them based on borrowed um, cryptos. So you have to have someone willing to loan before you can short. There is no naked shorting in a cryptocurrency market. Um, it's just not possible, at least yet. So this is Bitcoin chart. This is the Huobi. You can see up the top, we've got 706. I think the high was 735. Um, it, I'm not sure. But uh, it, we, we're seeing the same effect that we saw before, which is a lag in the uh, ARBs, although it's quite a bit tighter. We can go over to Bitfinex, which does have uh, shorting. But you can see that this is a really serious spike here. Now, looking at the long term here, is the spike going to hold? I, I think we're probably going to get a correction. We very well could get a run up straight up to new highs. That is quite possible. The volume doesn't tell me that that's going to happen. I think we're going to have a pullback. And if Bitcoin behaves the way it has in the past, then it'll probably be a dramatic pullback, maybe back to the top of the pennant area and and uh, even a little bit lower. So maybe 412. <laughs> so, you know, a high of 730 down to 412. Uh, that's that's what happens with Bitcoin. It's interesting that you when you read um, blogs like Zero Hedge where they still don't get it. It's, it's amazing that that you can have so much coverage of Bitcoin and have so many people commenting who still don't get it. And one of the things they say is, well, it's so volatile. Well, for the most part, you know, looking at the long term chart, you'd have to say it's so volatile to the upside. Yes, there has been downside volatility, but overall, Bitcoin has gone from since 2009, early 2009, from one penny to where it is today at $691. So, uh, that's volatility pretty much in one direction up. Now, there are going to be corrections. When you move from one penny to $691, you tell me what the percentage return is on that. Um, there could be any number of 50%, 80%, 90% pullbacks along the way when you're talking about that sort of return. But that's that's what it does. But it, the volatility is pretty much in one direction and that's up. So I wanted to cover some of the issues about uh, how to make your wallet safe and things like that. Because some people have asked questions about that. Before I do that, because I'm in, in the process of actively shorting Ethereum, I want to see where the chart is. Uh, well, it looks like I missed it. So. For me, this chart in Ethereum was really very, very parabolic. And so when I saw this spike here, I actually put on a short. And it looks like, uh, so you can see here on my shorts, I'm short made safe uh, ripple. And then I just put a short in little tiny test position here on Ethereum. Because for me, this spike, I like to sell spikes and I like to buy dips. Uh, because the way these markets tend to move is just in very, very dramatic fashion. So I may add to this. Right now, I'm just going to let this ride. It's still showing me a loss. Uh, I missed the ultimate top, but we'll get back to that. So let's get over to a wallet so I can just show you real simple, easy stuff on this. This is my Litecoin, well, one of my Litecoin wallets. And uh, so most of these wallets if you look at the help section and the about qt you can see that almost every wallet that's out there is a derivative of the original bitcoin wallet so you can see that they give credit to bitcoin and uh, the versions etc 
but pretty much all of these wallets are the same. Now, one of the features that you want to enable very soon is the encrypt wallet function. So basically what, what that does is once you've downloaded the wallet and transferred some coins to it, and that's just a matter of clicking on the receive button and getting an address. So you can generate an address uh, if you click the request. This is Litecoin. Request payment, it gives you the uh, image or you have this address. You give that to somebody or go to one of your trading accounts and you send to that address. So what you want to do is encrypt your wallet so that when you want to send or receive anything, uh, it requires a password. And you probably want to set a password. The best suggestions that I've seen in the past is memorization of a phrase or maybe two phrases. Um, you could think of maybe you could go to a book and write down page five, something, this paragraph, that, and put in a phrase or half a phrase and then combine it with another phrase. It's highly unlikely that anybody could detect that. So when you set a passphrase on your, here's the change passphrase function. So I can put in the current passphrase and change it. Once you set a passphrase on that, we'll go to uh, say the transaction history and I'll choose one of these addresses. So I'll copy this address uh, where I sent some Litecoin to in the past and I'll choose the send to address. And you can see it's sending to this address let me highlight that and put it back in there. And we're just going to send one Litecoin to that address. So you go down here, you click the send button, and you can see it will not send any Litecoins uh, anywhere until I put in the encrypted passphrase. The wallet itself is encrypted, which means that it's locked and without the passphrase, it's non-functional. So if you're going to set passphrases on your wallets, make sure you don't lose that passphrase uh, because if you do lose that passphrase and you have a locked wallet then that money's gone something like if you had a wallet in your back pocket and you had um, a whole bunch of money in there and then you locked in the safe and lost the combination and that it was an unbreakable safe you can think of cryptocurrencies with high level encryption as an unbreakable safe it's gone so you can see here once you have a wallet and you have some cryptocurrencies in it you set that so that you can't send it without putting in the passphrase and that's important because uh, when you have a computer on the internet there's always a possibility that can be hacked that if you're out there and you can reach them then by definition, those guys who are out there can reach you. There's no way around that dilemma. Now, a lot of people talk about firewalls, and you can put your computer behind a firewall, but if you are in the field that I'm in, which is um, computer network engineering, and you understand how firewalls work, really all a firewall does is uh, isolate it down to a port. In other words, it takes your IP address and only allows traffic in on a certain port. Nevertheless, what you've done is you've taken a giant gaping hole that's open to everyone in the world and you've reduced it down to a pinhole that's open to the world. But if whoever it is out in the world get finds a way to get through that pinhole, then they've got just as much as if they broke right through the door. So if you're on the internet, and you are reaching the rest of the world, by definition, the rest of the world can reach you. There's no way around that dilemma. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. You can turn your computer off when you're not using it. You can unplug it. But uh, one of the things you can do with your cryptocurrencies is you can set a passphrase so that if someone breaks into your computer and they find that wallet and they execute it, and they then go ahead and try to send themselves the coins in your wallet, they don't know the passphrase. They can't send those coins. So you have to protect it in that way. Now, the other thing you have to do is you have to back it up. So just let me show you briefly what I do is 
and it's not complex at all. You can get much more complicated on this. Uh, but uh, the first thing is what I do for search software on Windows is I always install a program called Agent Ransack. And that's just a, a program that creates a search feature in Windows that is much better than the native search feature that you get in your regular Windows, whether it's Windows 7, 8, or 10, or whatever. So it, it, it's similar to the old file search that they used to have in Windows where you could specify a specific file name, specify a specific uh, text phrase, whatever you wanted to, and search every file on the computer. Now, virtually every cryptocurrency out there, as I pointed out before, is going to be based on the original Bitcoin wallet. They, If you've downloaded Bitcoin wallet and looked at it, it looks just like Litecoin. Litecoin was copied from it, and, and most of all the other cryptocurrencies look like it. All I've shown you before my uh, Philosopher Stone wallet, and I'll run that one in the background. I'll bring that up in a second so you can see that one. But for the most part, most of these wallets look just like the Bitcoin core client. And we'll let that one update, and then I'll bring it up. So when you're trying to make a copy of your wallet, you have to remember that this number here that you're seeing in this wallet, this wallet here shows 500 Litecoins. Now, does that mean that I have 500 Litecoins stored on my computer? Well, it does in a way, but really what it means is that the ledger that is contained in all the rest of the Litecoin wallets in the entire world agree that this wallet has 500 uh, Litecoins. And that's going to be important when I show you how, um, when you're going to back this up. So back to what I was saying on the Agent Ransack, you've installed Agent Ransack or whatever it is, a good search program. What you type in for file name is wallet.dat. In 90, maybe 90 to 95 percent of all cryptocurrencies, the name of the wallet, and that is going to be the file that stores your encrypted keys. Remember, the, pe the, the, the people that have the keys to a wallet are the ones who own that wallet and that's all you need and that's the basis behind call wallet storage which is basically putting it on a piece of paper but if I search for wallet.dat you can see here I've got my C and my D drives here and it's gonna pull a lot of wallet.dat files because I've had a lot of altcoins you can see Fedora, Florin, Global, Grandcoin etc but here's my uh, Litecoin wallet it's stored on my D drive and uh, what I can do, you can see by the size here. These are the sizes of these wallets. And uh, one of the ways you can know that you don't really have a wallet that has any coins in it is usually the default size is either going to be 80K or 88K. Uh, if it's larger than that, then there's going to be data in it. So you can look at the wallets that I have that are big. Florin coin is 656. And uh, you've got Grand coin 120. Here's Florent coin again, so I've got a backup of that. But generally, if it's around 80 or 88K, it's probably just an empty wallet. But here's my Litecoin wallet. That's 112 KB. That's those 500 Litecoins. Now, I can take this wallet.dat file and I can copy it. If I don't lock up. So once I copy that file, I can put it anywhere. I can paste it to my desktop, okay? I can take it and I can put it in an email, send it to myself. That's not really advisable because then somebody who can intercept your email could get it. But you could take that wallet and you could go to your WinZip, add it to archive. And you could archive that and zip it up and set a password on that zip file. So I could go in, set some ridiculous password, zip it up. Then I have a zipped wallet.dat file. I can take that, put it in an email. I can hide it on a thumb drive. I can put it anywhere. Now, let's get back to the issue I was talking about of what the ledger says you have. So the question is going to come up, well, I've got multiple wallet.dat files all over the place. 
And which one's right? Well, the one that's right is, is the most recent one. So the one that has the most recent transactions is the one that's going to be right. So if you take one of those files and load it up into a client and then you make a transaction, then every other one of those that you have, when it updates, is going to have that same transaction. Not because that wallet knows about that transaction, but because that wallet, when you put it in a new client, is going to go out to the blockchain, get the latest information, and then um, it uh, is going to be updated. So, for example, if I backed up my wallet.dat file to my desktop here, then I took it and I sent it through in an email to my laptop. And I went to my laptop and I downloaded the Litecoin client and sent 100 Litecoins to my Poloniex account. And uh, then that transaction completed. If I came back to this computer and updated this Litecoin client with the same keys, you'd see minus 100 Litecoins on this client because you have to remember that the information is kind of in the cloud. It's not in my wallet, but it's all of the other wallets and miners out there that know about that information. So hopefully that explains to you how you can make an, set a password on your wallet make an infinite number of backup copies to that wallet and load those into any client that you want. And uh, that's how you back up, store, and control your any cryptocurrency that you have. So let's get back to the Poloniex market here. Now, I shorted Ethereum here. Now you can see this is a, a big, big spike here going on Ethereum. And... Uh, it, it could go higher from here. Uh, just looking at the CryptoCoin price index, uh, the move is really phenomenal. Looking at market cap, you can see that Ethereum is all the way up now to one and a half billion dollars in market cap. Bitcoin is over $10 billion. So we're looking at tremendous moves in these cryptocurrencies. I do believe that it's uh, Chinese cash that's coming in that's making this happen. But if you're going to dabble in this space, I suggest you do a number of things. I would suggest that you buy Bitcoin, even just a very, very small amount of Bitcoin. And whether it's on Coinbase or th there are a number of them. Coinbase is the one that I've used. And you can put your credit card in there and buy some Bitcoin. Then make sure that you download the Bitcoin Core Wallet, the, the main client, which is going to take a long time to update to get the entire blockchain. By the way, people have asked about the blockchain. The blockchain is basically the ledger. It's all transactions that have ever existed. But fortunately, because of the nature of storage, as that uh, blockchain expands in, in size, the advancements in storage are actually moving faster than that. So I don't think that's ever going to be an issue. But if you download that, that uh, wallet, the Bitcoin Core that has every transaction, you're going to download every single transaction that's ever happened. It's going to take probably a day or two for that to update, depending upon your um, internet connection. And then if you were on Coinbase, you would take those coins that you bought on Coinbase and go into your wallet and find the receiving address. It's I'm going to show you Litecoin, but it's the same as... Bitcoin. You just generate a payment address, copy the address, go to your Coinbase account, put in that address, put in the number of coins you want to send, and within a certain amount of time those coins will arrive in your wallet. Once you have them in your wallet, then you're going to want to do what I said. You're going to want to password protect it by encrypting that wallet, and then you're going to want to make multiple backups of that wallet and store those in different places. And maybe if you're very, very uh, suspicious of the whole system, then you'll want to make a paper or a cold wallet, which really just amounts to physically writing down those keys, uh, writing out that entire uh, cryptographic uh, password, essentially, which is a long phrase of numbers and letters, capital and lowercase that are the keys to that wallet and you can have those on a piece of paper and you can manually put those back into a wallet if you need to. So that's kind of the summary of 
how to protect your stuff. It doesn't go into all the deep detail of uh, all the stuff that's out there. There's all kinds of wallets. There's all kinds of protection that you can do. It goes much, much deeper than what I've described. But if you do just those basics, you'll probably be okay. Now, here's, for example, one of the um, alternative coins. I've shown you this one before. This is my Philosopher's Stone wallet. Will Philosopher's Stone be worth anything? I don't know. You can see my wallet. I have 117,000 of these coins. And this is a proof of stake coin. So you earn coins based upon how many coins you have. So you can go in here and uh, unlock your wallet and do that to get it to start mining. Uh, and uh, it will go and basically if you have coins you get more coins um, again this whole thing is a really big crapshoot if you're talking about alternative cryptocurrencies it's very difficult to determine which ones of these are going to succeed you can see if we list them by market cap up here we're up at 14 billion dollar market cap but for the most part the vast majority it's it's uh it's just like the um a distribution of wealth in the financial system right now with the top 0.0001 percent etc you can see that bitcoin out of 14 billion uh bitcoin has 10 of it and then ethereum has 1.5 and then litecoin etc so the first one two three four five have 90 something percent of all the market cap nevertheless there's still hundreds and hundreds of these cryptocurrencies uh, some of them rise dramatically from nowhere. There's a lot of uh, opportunity to make a lot of money. There's also a lot of opportunity to lose a lot of money. So where are we going from here? Well, I think that I don't really have any doubts that Bitcoin is going to take out that old $1,200 high. Uh, it may take a while. We, I'm banking that we're probably going to have a zigzag correction maybe down to 400 or so and then a move up but it is quite possible that we will get a move straight up through uh, twelve hundred dollars on a bitcoin and just move right through this line in very very short order that's quite possible and we'll talk to you next time